Assalamu alaikum. I'm with the Secretary General today of the World Federation. Welcome to the program. Thank you. If you can please introduce yourself and tell us briefly about what you do. Um, my name is Shane Bas Hassam. Uh, I'm from Birmingham. Um, I've been doing uh, community work for a number of years. So at the moment, I'm the Secretary General of the World Federation. I'm uh, really blessed and really feel a great role. In, um, um, and it, I've been doing community work for a number of years. So from my teenage times, I was running camps, uh, doing work for the Council of European Jamaats. I was an executive ca a committee member at the Birmingham Jamaat. And I've been working for WF as a volunteer for about 10 years in various roles. Uh, I really enjoyed the relief role as the relief assistant secretary general. I was executive counselor as well of the World Federation uh, and also the deputy secretary general and now the secretary general. So I've been in the organization for about 10, 11 years now as a volunteer. If we talk about this particular three years where you have been the secretary general, what kind of projects have you personally been involved in and uh, what do you think has changed? Um, I mean, we've been doing a lot of projects. I think uh, when we did the action plan at the last conference three years ago, uh, and we did an ambitious plan of, of putting forward 96 projects, and I think that has developed in over 100 projects. Um, we have different departments within the Secretariat. We have five departments. So, for example, we have the Health Department, Islamic Education Department, the Relief Department, Zainabia Child Sponsorship Scheme, uh, and, and various others, including the Islamic Education as well. So, with five big departments, a lot of work goes on, and uh, Alhamdulillah, a lot of work has taken place uh, in, in many different areas. If you were to look back and say, you know, these are the achievements I'm really proud of during my period of, you know, leadership here, what yes. would those be? I think it's not, um, I mean, we'd be really, really proud of the uh, MCE, the Madrasa Centre of Excellence. That really is one of the flagship projects that we've undertaken. Uh, I remember three years ago, it was just merely a paper, concept paper, mm -hmm. and now we can see it in fruition. We've got the four different departments of the Madrasa Centre of Excellence running, learning resources, assessment and evaluation, uh, curriculum development and... and um, teachers development as well. So four different departments, a lot of work going on. Uh, we're targeting that it goes into 144 different madaris around the world. So a lot of foundation work has gone on, a lot of thinking as well. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, that has been developing really well. So that's one flagship project. The other one is really the way we have realigned World Federation to becoming one that will work more for the Koja community. We can see many changes in the way this is being done, especially in the different ways of working that are happening between the World Federation and the regional federations as well. This, I think, is a really big achievement. And I think this is reflected in the wonderful relationships we have at the moment between the World Federation and the various regional federations. You talked about uh, the madrasa. Um, there have been some criticisms about the amount of uh, funding that has gone into this project, into training, that some of it may not necessarily be used very well. What's your response to that? I mean, I think it's a fair comment that obviously these, uh, these programs aren't, aren't, aren't cheap. And when you look at the Ismaili community, we see that they spent millions of pounds doing the type of work that we have done, really, I believe, on a shoestring budget. And I always believe if you pay peanuts, you tend to get very, very low quality work. I think the quality of work has been good. There are things we could have done even better. So if we look at it, for example, if we break it down, our curriculum development work has taken a lot of time. We have managed to get the curriculum from various different modalities put them together and are now consulting on the curriculum. If you look at the teacher development work, there's new areas that we are doing that are really different. So for example, we're looking at the neuropsychology of teaching, something completely different. So I think if we are to add value, it's not simply about doing the easy things. We have to go really deep. And to go deep, there are resources. And one of them is financial, but the most important is human. And we're still lacking in that human capacity as well. It's one thing, you know, to have the, these plans which are keeping pace with uh, whatever is the latest technology, latest thinking out there in the world. Um, but at the bottom of it all, the, the root aim of all this is the changes that it brings into the community, what you teach your children, the values. Um, is there anything to show for it yet, or is it too early? I think in some ways it's early, and in some ways there are things to show for. So, for example, if we look at teachers, uh, teacher development, this is the key area. If we want to make a real impact, we need to look at teacher development. And we've been running training programs in Madaris across. I mean, we have, as we said, 144 Madaris across the world. Many of them have training plans, but a lot of them have very basic training plans. We want to go much deeper. For example, one of the things we're looking at is accrediting every single teacher that we have in a Madaris for teacher development, that they've been through specific courses. And if we do that, the level of value will be very, very big. Another thing, for example, is learning resources. We are very weak as a community on our learning resources. We want to bring online resources in. We want to bring things 
in from younger children all the way to young adults as well. So I think the level of depth of work is, is, is very huge. And when we did this work, we didn't realize how, how, how deep it was. Another thing that we are doing, and I think we've had a lot of value in, is assessment and evaluation. We've begun assessing um, uh, Madaris across the world and finding gaps and finding the gap analysis for them. And the methodology of doing it has been very soft. It's been the Madaris almost assessing themselves. And a lot of, a lot of gaps have been found and areas to improve upon. When you're talking of madrasas, these are basically religious uh, institutions uh, imparting religious knowledge. So obviously the, what we're looking to achieve at the end of the day is people with better, better connection to Allah, taqwa. When would you say can, would be fair for us to say after these many years we can assess and say if the community has got more taqwa? That's a, that's a brilliant question. I think that is really hard to immediately assess. There's a time, a gestation period that will be needed, but eventually, inshallah, we'll be able to see a community with a higher level of tarbiyah. We have great knowledge. The children um, that we have in mad madrasas are probably uh, well, well, you know, have good level of knowledge, but the difference is, is, is that uh, tarbiyah side, and that is what we need to develop. Inshallah, with the efforts, we'll be able to see that gap, that difference increasing, inshallah. Obviously, for us, our faith is um, walking on the footstep of the Ahlul Bayt. And there's other communities there who share our faith. Uh, what is our level as opposed to that? Do we compare? Do we walk with these communities together? Do we try to see ourselves as one Shia global body? Yes, I think we do quite a lot of work. I mean, I can, I can say, for example, in Europe, a lot of work goes on with non-Koja Shia bodies. So, for example, if we look at uh, issues, for example, in Malaysia, Indonesia, Pakistan, across the world, there's a lot of cross-working that goes to place. Uh, there's also a lot of work going on, for example, in Europe, in forming a council of, of Shia bodies. And that type of work should go on in North America, Africa as well. So, alhamdulillah, it has started. There's work going on. But as always, more can, more can be done. In your uh, opinion, how do you think has the World Federation changed over the years and in particular during your time? I think what we have tried to do is to really make a stronger relationship with the regional federations. I think we've managed to do that and there is more cross-working going place. In fact, what we want to see in the following three years is almost a coming together so that them and us is taken out. At the moment, and there has been with World Federation and for example our regional federations and Jamaats, a them and an us. So all these organizations, Jamaats, Regional Federation, World Federation are all working in silos, in their own vacuums, rather than really coming together and working together. Our idea was to coordinate things, bring them all together, and I think slowly we are doing that. We're working, inshallah, on a paper for conference, uh, which will happen in May, as to how really we can work hand in hand with regional federations and change the structure that we have in place. If we have that, I think that there'll be more work done for the Koja community. This body was formed by our forefathers. Yeah, you can say that it belongs to an older generation. But there are people like you who are young and who are in a significant position in this uh, body. Uh, what would you say is the involvement generally of the youth in this body? I think we have, we do have youth involvement at the highest level. I mean, our honorary treasurer is very young, uh, myself, our deputy SG and various others. But we need to have more younger people coming in with young, young minds to change the organizations and improve them. So one of the things we need to do, for example, if we look at our economic side, we have a lot of young entrepreneurs. We need to get them to feel love for our organizations, to have that, that sense of oneness and feeling. And that is something we need to really develop. Because if we have that, then the future of our organizations will be strong, not just the, not just the present. Do you think sometimes the younger generation, people who are not in leadership positions, uh, they feel somewhat disconnected and you know it looks like this big umbrella body out there somewhere that has got nothing to do with us. So even though they have a lot to offer, they shy away from it. Why do you think that is the case? I think I fully agree with you. I think they, a lot of them do shy away. I think there's a couple of things. For World Federation, because it is not a Jamaat, you can't go in, you can't see it, you can't physically you know, view it, people do feel that it's disconnected. So it's become an organization that you can access via email or via website. We need to somehow find a way of really reaching the grassroots. I know our president does a lot of traveling. I mean, his aim was to go in these six years to every Jamaat that we have in the world. I think he has almost accomplished that. But we need to find a way of getting access for our, for our youths in particular. The second thing is there's a, there's a feeling within the youth, and I had this feeling as well, that there's a lot of politics in our community. We can see that a lot of that at a Jamaat level especially, where people get frustrated. So we need to find a way in which we can get them involved, get them in, but also give them the freedom to get work done. And that is really important. If somebody is watching this and is listening to you and somebody is sitting in one of the smaller Jamaats or even a bigger Jamaat far away and feels like I have something to offer, I want to do something, I don't know how to do it, 
what would be your advice to them? How, what do they do? Well, I think, I mean, for me, the way I got involved was first getting involved in my Jamaat as well and at co-edge level. But even World Federation were always willing to look for new blood, as it were, younger people to come through. I think if they can approach their Jamaat, the region, or indeed the WF, and tell them what they can offer, we should aim really to get them in. One thing we are looking to do in the next term, un un under, the, under, the, under the current president, is to look at bringing volunteers in. So a, a, a method within the Secretariat in which that we can give them work to do, tasks, we can get them to give their ideas and suggestions. One thing about volunteering is, and there's a misconception, volunteering is not just about doing work, it's about contributing ideas and seeing them through. And a lot of our Jamaats, regional federations and sometimes the World Federation, we don't recognize that. We use the youngsters to do work, but actually it should be about giving ideas and, and, and taking it forward. Do we have any mechanism with the social media explosion that is there right now for people to get these messages across to you? Um, how do they communicate if they wanted with the bodies? I, I think we, we are still lacking in this area. We have, of course, emails and telephones and all the rest of it. But we need to find a way of maybe meeting youths together as, as, as you know, within, within regions, etc. Also, I think we can, um, we can have, like, for example, youth conferences. There was a wonderful youth conference held recently by COEG. I know Africa hold them as well. And maybe something on an international level to get youth galvanized as well. As you know, media is an important tool in today's world. And... Uh, um, you know, there's a lot of discussion also that World Federation has been very slow in uh, taking up media generally. What would you say, what plans do you have, what is coming up for people in the media sector? I mean, we're doing a lot on, for example, social media like Facebook and Twitter. We've been a bit slow to get to it, but now we're doing quite a lot. I think we're almost doing too much onto Twitter and Facebook. A lot of things are being put on. We're also working on production of Islamic content. A lot of work has happened in Islamic education, wonderful work in writing books. But we need to get to modern methods. So, for example, with the iPad generation, we need to be having things for YouTube, things on television channels, and very, very importantly, we need to have things like board games, for example. I think our way of working has to be out of the box. So, yes, we have been done books, we should keep that going, but how can we make apps, for example, Islamic apps? We need to, uh, I think, think in modern uh, and, 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 and you know, refresh our way of working. Very briefly, if you can explain the different departments of the World Federation and what do they really do? We have, at the moment, five different departments. I mean, we have, the, for example, the Relief Department, which is looking at economic development of our, of our community and indeed the Shia community. We have the Health Department, Islamic Education Department, which is our biggest department, biggest by way of budget and the amount of work that we do as well. Uh, we have the Zainabia Child Sponsorship Scheme, where so a lot of wonderful work has gone on and has gone on for a number of years. Uh, and we have our Education Department as well, which is about loans on the one side, but also about giving access to education uh, to our community members as well. You've talked about what uh, achievements you think have happened. Um, what hasn't worked very well that you would have wanted to see it differently? I think my main regret is there was one really big flagship project that we couldn't bring into fruition and that's what we call the generation plan, i.e. doing a census and then from the census creating a long-term strategy for the World Federation. We talked about it a lot, but because of lack of human resources, that wasn't done. And I think there's a lot of regret about that, but it's something that can be done in the next term and I think should be made a priority. So that's definitely one. I think the second one is I feel we still do different amounts of work in different regions. So for example, in Pakistan, we don't really contribute or add value to the Koja community in Pakistan. I think we need to sit down and see how we can do that and discuss that. The same can be said in other regions. So a lot of wonderful work happens in Europe and Africa, but more can be done in equal measures to all the community around the world. And this is something we need to work on. Is there anything on a personal level that you feel you regret either doing or not having done? I think not having done is not having enough time because this, uh, the role of Secretary General means talking to people a lot, a lot of emails, a lot of communication. It's, it's really about managing relationships more than anything else and for that you need time. And the only regret was not having as much time as possible. But uh, the team is absolutely wonderful. We have an efficient secretariat, very understanding office bearers and Alhamdulillah, I think so far the, the, the term has gone well and there's a platform now for the next term for a lot of work to be done. We talked about the youths, uh, but generally, do you feel that uh, sometimes any member of the community might feel that uh, World Federation is not really adding value at the grassroots, it's not attached to the grassroots? What's your opinion about that? I think I can see why people would say we are disconnected from the grassroots, because people are members of Jamaats, who are members of regional federations, who are members of WF. So there's a long, it could look bureaucratic, but at the same time we need to bring World Federation to the grassroots. We need to demonstrate what work we have done, take ideas back as well. I think we've done that better in the last three years, but there are improvements to do. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, question-answer sessions, 
speeches, forums, but somehow we can maybe increase the communication to and from as well. Uh, remember, our community, although small, is all over the world. So we need to we need to work on that. Would you say UEFA we even need World Federation? It's a it's a good question. I think we we almost certainly need an organisation that can coordinate the Koja community's work and also add value to the wider Shia community. So we do need an organisation that can do that. I think as a World Federation we can really add value by having the intellectual capital to spot gaps in our community. So for example, MC is one of them. The Madrasa structure really needed to be shaken up. And I think MC is doing that. We need to now, other things we need to do, for example, we need to look at how we add value to our ulama, how our ulama can add value to us. So World Federation can do cross-regional work like this, for example. The other thing World Federation can do is be redistribution of income. So, for example, income from the West and Africa going towards India, Pakistan, etc. And in that as well, we need to clarify how important we must place the Koja community's priorities. That's the second thing. The third thing as World Federation we can do is to create that heritage, that love for our Koja community, which I think we need to develop a lot more. And if we do this, no doubt, there's a huge requirement for this organization. What you're basically saying is that World Federation is about the Koja identity, it's about retaining our identity as Kojas. Um, is that really important in today's time, especially when we are living in very multicultural societies whereby you're confused sometimes whether you are a British Muslim, whether you're an African, whether you're a Koja, you know, does it really matter being Koja in today's era? I think we are fa family. As a Koja community, we are a family. So it's like saying to our family, does our family matter? Of course it does. We came from the same place, we have the same tongue, we have the same identity. It's our, our, our foundation, but we must contribute to the wider community. And we mustn't have this isolationist thinking whereby we should only assist Kojas only, or only think about Kojas. We must think about the big picture, add value for the rest of the community. But my own personal feeling is, where there is a need, it should first go to our Koja community members if possible because if we can eradicate things like poverty, things like illiteracy, if we can put up education levels in our own community, then we can add more value to the wider humanity at large. So this is what we really I think I think we should be should be our ideology. Final question. Um, what do you think is your vision for the next term of the World Federation? I think, I think the, the vision of our, our team really is to focus on the three themes that we had. The first thing is to embed the Madrasa Center of Excellence, to really make sure that we are adding value to these 144 Madaris, because that's really, really important. All the investment will really tell in the second term. The second thing is to make sure that we economically develop our community. Some work has begun, for example, in Dar es Salaam and in other parts of Africa to help our community on microfinance schemes and grant schemes. But it's not just about the bottom tier. We should also push the entire community up and there should be some real thinking in how we can do that. For example, we're working on a business directory. We need to see how that networking amongst businesses can take place with Jiva. And the third thing that we need to do, and which is really important, is to continue to connect our community, to rebuild a sense of pride, heritage, trust within each other as well, and to build that family bond that we should have. So if we continue these three things, then inshallah we'll see these things through, we hope, when we pray inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.